welcome back everyone. I am Dagan Brock from Apple2.gs. Uh, this has been a fairly long hiatus from video making for me because I've been working so hard on other projects. And today we're actually not talking about Apple 2 GS programming, which of course I love, but we're going to talk about uh, some Apple 2 8-bit programming using AppleSoft Basic and some of the tools that I've been working on. And we're actually going to make a, a simple game in uh, Basic but I don't want you to get too caught up in the, hey, we're making a game in basic part. What I'm really trying to show you today are two uh, specific tools that I've been working on to try and help you get your content into games. Because honestly, I feel like that's uh, a bigger stumbling block for a lot of people. Maybe they want to program and uh, they're super creative people and they just need some help kind of getting some things going. So the first tool is uh, Buckshot, which is an image conversion tool. Uh, it's been out for about two months. The other tool is called KSynth, and that is a fork of another program called KSynth, and it's a little music editing program. Uh, we tie those together into, a, like I said, a basic program in this case that loads images and uh, plays some songs and has a little game. And I just want to show how easy it can be. So if you stick around for about the next uh, 40 minutes or so, We'll make a complete game and then we'll try it out on the real hardware. Okay, so the first thing for our game, we're gonna we're gonna call this game the Great Apple Zini, and it's gonna be a bit it's gonna be a number guessing game with sort of a uh, fortune teller theme. So the first thing I'm just going to one of these online logo generators and I'm going to come up with a little a little logo and then we're going to get a picture for our main screen while you're playing the game and then a picture for the winning screen and we'll run those through our image conversion tool so uh, we'll type in the title the great Apple Zini okay and uh, I, I actually kind of like this I picked this because it's already in the sort of blue and oranges which is a good palette choice if you're using high res which we're going to use and just make a simple little goofy goofy thing here and we've generated our beautiful logo we're just gonna save this and I will create a new directory where we're just gonna throw these images before I uh, get to the image conversion part we'll call it uh, uh, Apple Zini sure why not it's the name of our game after all, and this one will be called uh, Logo. Great. All right, next let's get a fortune teller image. Um, I'm not going to sell this game, but I'll go ahead and choose um, Advanced Search here on the Google Image Search to get something that's uh, pretty much not uh, explicitly copyright material. Uh, I like this guy. Again, thinking about the palettes, you know, the green might work well. And I'm not going to do any um, aspect ratio correction on this video. We're really just going for speed here. And to show you how easy it is to convert images and get them on the Apple II and start putting them in a game. Okay, our last picture, we win. I guess we win his treasure or something. So let's get a picture of some treasure. And uh, I don't feel like the options are as good on these treasure chests, but hmm, yeah, this one should work fine. So we've saved that. It's got a it's a it's a ping file PNG with a transparent background. So I need to do one thing because when that gets converted in my image converter to a BMP file, it'll make that background black, and I just want to make sure that it actually makes the background white. So you could use your image editor of choice. I'm just throwing it in an old version of Photoshop. Go ahead and change the background and then we'll save it back out as a ping. Okay, we've got our three images saved for the game. We don't need to do anything more with them except convert them. Before we get to that though, I'm gonna start up my emulator real quick because we're gonna do a test to show you just how easy this is between, um, I'm using GS Plus, which is the emulator I'm working on, it now supports drag and drop functionality, and that'll uh, I'll show you that in a second. So there's my my Apple II GS. I was going to do this on real hardware from this point out, but it's so much easier to record on uh, these emulators, get all the screens. So here's Buckshot. Let's go ahead and find our images. Buckshot is the image converter based on BMP to DHR. Uh, 
it's a quite a mouthful bitmap to double high res graphics basically so I just created a favorite shortcut so we can find our images a little more easily I'm going to turn on live preview uh, low res and double low res just won't cut it for the these incredible graphics so here you can see in high res it already looks pretty good uh, typically for continuous color images it's nicer to have the larger input resolution here I don't think it makes a difference I want to just sort of set right there where the bottom is still darkened and the top is lighter. Here's the new feature. Save to Protoss lets you create a new Protoss image or pick a Protoss image and it uses uh, Cadius under the hood by Brutal Deluxe. So now you can save your images straight to uh, Protoss order, HDV, or 2MG file. So I created my image and I'm going to call this first picture logo.bin and you can see down here it says file saved. So all we have to do is do that same thing with our other two images. Let's get our, our fortune teller. He's going to look stretched, but I don't care. You know, it's it's not bad. We could fix the aspect ratio um, and, and deal with whatever black space around the edge. I'm just trying to kind of uh, show you how quickly we can get these art assets in there. Again, save to Protoss. Pick our same image that we created last time. and It'll give us a chance to name the file. So teller for fortune teller. And our last image, of course, the beautiful treasure chest that I am not crazy about. And the gold really does not look good here. Uh, so, you know, I could go back and r find some better images or do some color mapping. F um, if it was double high res, it'd probably look okay. You've got some yellows and stuff in double high res, but high res really is quite limited with green, orange, blue, and uh, purple, and white and black, of course. But that's close enough. You get the idea. It looks like treasure. We'll save that to our image, our, our Protoss disk image. We'll call it treasure. Okay, here we have saved that. Here's a neat part. We'll quit and I will open a finder window. And let's get our, there's our Protoss image. Drag it right onto the emulator and it mounts it in there. Isn't that cute? And actually pretty awesome. So let's change to that disk in our emulator. And you can see, sure enough, it saved all of our files inside the uh, applezini.po. Let's check one out. Oh, how great is that? So that's that's really how easy it is to get these uh, graphics on here now. And you can see you can just bloat them, bload for binary load, and it should have the aux type set correctly to load it right in the right place. And we're ready to start uh, start working on our actual game. Oh no, because we need to add some music. Luckily I've just written a little program called KSynth that uh, is a fork of Charles Mangan's project that extracts some of the sound playback code from Karatika, I believe, and made a little editor, a little music editor, sort of in the style of a single channel mod tracker using the Apple II beeper. You can get the Protoss images right here on the GitHub page, and I'll have links to this in the YouTube description. So. So let's get our emulator started up. And sorry, my window is off screen there. So this is what it looks like. Uh, there's a little note box in the middle, your current note. There's a cheat sheet on the bottom that kind of gives you the, the note values. But we can load a tune real quick and hear what it sounds like. So hopefully you could see that basically the notes sort of scroll from right to left across the screen. Uh, whichever note it's currently playing is right there in the middle. And you can hit question mark or H for the help screen that gives you more info. We, it's got uh, playback, editing functions, copy and paste, actually multi-note copy and paste, a virtual keyboard. So that's basically what we will use to make our music. Let's start with a new song. So I hit control K to turn on the virtual keyboard and now we can sort of play our notes out as we're making our song. Oops. 
and we'll make this one longer. Oops. And the last one, we'll put. Uh... Okay, now I put in FF with the value. FF is a rest. Actually, I'm going to put a rest in at the end. Okay, it's no Mozart or Beethoven, but it's a simple little song that has sort of an uplifting intro sound. I will warn you that in the playback, it will be a little bit uh, faster in between notes because I'm in my editor here drawing a lot to the screen in between each note to update that note display. So. Um, We'll call this intro.ks. You don't need an extension, but the KS tells me that this is a K-Synth song. All right, the next song we need, we need one for when we start our match. So we're going to have it sound a little more minor key and ominous uh, just to introduce you to the challenge. And go up an octave. see. I don't know if, oops, this really makes sense as a song. Okay, I mean, you know, it's a song. <laughs> we'll call this one Game Start and save that, gamestart.ks, and create one more new song. Now we've got to do a song for when you win, something kind of victorious. I'll use control K to set the keyboard mode up to a longer duration. So I'm going to go ahead and put another rest in with FF at the end and we're going to copy this whole chunk. Um, you, I can hit the number 4 on the keyboard and you'll see a little X4 up there at the top. It means copy and paste or any items are going to be repeated so it's going to copy 4 notes and paste 4 notes. Okay, so it's uh, most of a wind song. Let's see how, how it sounds. I'll put a rest at the end. Okay, we have our wind song. Let's just call it wind.ks, and then we're going to quit out of 
like ksynth. And we're going to copy those files, those songs, and the little basic library. So let's start with uh, where we have the various KS songs that I just saved. Intro. Uh, I guess I should have selected all of them. And our game start and our win. And we also need this ksynth basic ksynth baz uh, binary file. That's going to be our little player. Okay, and just to try it out real fast, I'll show you kind of how it works. If you look at the uh, project page, I have an example of the basic library too, so it should be pretty easy to follow along. You basically load the library, then you load your song, you make one call to call 768 with the location of your song, and then you can play it anytime you like uh, using call 768 with a comma 2 after it. So we'll just test this out. Okay, um, all our files look good, and we'll first load our playback engine at 300, even though it shouldn't need the 300, I believe it's already set to 300. Then we load our song at 4000, which is the, uh, the second high res page. So I'm telling it call 768 goes to that 300 location, 1 means set the song location, and then 16384 is the decimal version of 4000. Okay, so now we have three songs and we've got our three images. They are on a Prodos disk image, so we are pretty much ready to start working on the actual game proper. And I'll warn you, I am not a basic programmer. I do a lot of programming in a lot of languages, and uh, I don't really use a lot of BASIC, but I think I can stumble my way through this one. So these are our files. We've got everything we need. Uh, let's just start somewhere, and I guess we'll start at uh, 1000. I like to give myself a lot of space because you know how BASIC is with the line numbers. Yeah, line numbers. Okay. So the first thing we'll do, identify a little code block here. Um, let me see if I can remember how to paste into my own emulator. And yeah, there it is. Okay, so first thing we do is load our library for the sound playback engine. That's kind of a universal and it doesn't change, so we can just do that right away. Uh, and I forgot, yeah, C052, we need to toggle that and C053. C052 memory location will turn off the bottom four lines of text and C053 will turn them back on and we need to do that from basic so I'm just using the monitor here to remind myself that C052 in hexadecimal is converted to decimal number 49234. Okay, so now that I know that I'll keep that in mind 49234. We'll start our intro. Uh, we will do another B load binary load statement to get our song into position and I load the song before I load the graphics so that as soon as the graphics are done we can play the song and there's not more loading. Uh, I set the song location All right, 16384 equals location hexadecimal 4000. Turn on high res graphics and we need to do that little put uh, to 49234 that should allow it to be a full screen graphic and so we'll have a, a black screen and you will see the data as it's being loaded and because of the uh, memory layout of the graphic screen it kind of has that vertical blinds effect or yeah, sorry uh, horizontal blind I guess okay um, what else do we need yeah, I just want to I want to get a key here. And that will be our sort of pause after showing the awesome intro graphics and then we turn the bottom four lines of text back on and continue uh merrily along our way. And I'm going to clear it as well, clear the title graphic. And we'll just say 1200 is kind of the start of our, our main game loop 
what have you. Um, let's say welcome player, ready to guess. Whatever we are guessing. And the dreaded syntax error. Yes, uh, like I said, I'm not a great basic programmer. When you use poke, you're trying to poke something into a memory location, so it helps to add a value to poke. There we go. I will get through this. Oh, let me fix one other uh, of the exact same syntax error. Let's try and run this again. Beauty. Okay, next step is adding our song in there. So we'll just do it uh, right. I forgot to leave space. We'll do it right after we show the graphic, loads the graphic, plays the song. You can't hear it. It's in my headphones. Trust me, it is great. Okay, we'll save this for now. Okay, so we've made our little intro. Let's start fixing a couple things with that before we move on. Um, Firstly, it's just drawing at the bottom of the screen because that's where I happen to be. So let's let's do a couple things. Uh, let's switch to 80 column mode with Escape and the 8 key, at least on the Apple II GS firmware. All right. Now we'll say uh, let's make a special routine uh, at 9,000 that says clear the screen and let's set this to uh, the vertical position 21 on the screen so it's where we can read it and then return and we're gonna change uh, this to use that go sub 9000 Oops, welcome player. And this one, we're going to change it to an input statement. Ready to guess. We don't need the question mark. We're going to read that into a dollar sign. And then at 2000, we'll put our oops, guessing game. And finally, at uh, let's do this we're gonna put a uh, check on what they put for their answer then we'll go to let's say uh, 1300 is where we'll put this sort of bomb out thing we're going to use the escape key again to kind of pseudo copy paste. So it now it looks like this, and I'll show you why I did that. So we've got a bunch of checks in there, and there's probably better ways to test. And then otherwise, 1260. If we made it this far, let's go to the guessing game. Otherwise, if we got here, we'll switch back to text and and print. And we'll say, what do we say? Uh, I don't hear Bob. All right, typical uh, sort of. Uh, snarky 1980s text adventure style here. All right, so what we have now is if they say no, then presumably we would bomb out. So let's try that. Welcome player, ready to guess. Ooh, did not put my, my, my thing. Okay, and there's a reason for that. Uh, let's put this in. Otherwise, uh, sorry, we'll just put an end in there before we get to our go subroutine. 
that's our main one, so I'm not going to use a ton of ghost subs. All right, now if we type, uh, well, let's fix this other bug too. Ready to guess? I thought it, I guess it just puts the question mark when you don't put a string in there. So we'll run it from 1200 again. Ready to guess? Yes, great. Uh, run that again. Ready to guess? No. Get out of here, bud. Run it one more time. Ready to guess? No. Get out of here, bub. Again. Um, I keep forgetting. I somehow mess this up. Okay. And we'll switch back to 40 column mode to run it the way it would be by default. Run. Press key. Ready to guess? Yeah. All right. Okay. The next part is uh, what? Are, what are we going to do when the game starts? Well, that's pretty easy in a way because the first thing we're going to do. Let's switch back to 80 columns. Is similar to what we did for the intro. If we're at 2000. We're at this guessing game. So let's go ahead and uh, load our guy up and our, our uh, new song. So this is what we did for the other song. It was intro, KS, blah, blah, blah. Um, let me see again. What was my song called? Teller and Game Start. Okay. So. It's called game start dot ks a string thousand. I don't need to reinitialize the song because um, I'm loading it in the same location as the other song. And don't worry, when I'm typing over these other lines, I'm just it's really the input buffer. I'm not actually editing like you would in a traditional text editor if you're not a basic programmer and don't uh, don't kind of get what's going on. So uh, at this point, we want to do something similar to before, where we uh, uh, teller dot bin, and then two zero three zero. We will play the intro music. Okay. 2040. Well, let's not. That is the game music. Um, no, we can. We can keep going. So, next thing we would do is go sub 9000. Oh, wait. I'm sorry. Let's do this. The first thing you do after you load the teller. Uh, let's see. We're at um, basically at line uh, 2000. We load our our song. Uh, we load the teller picture. But before we do that, let's go to 2015. We need to add a uh, poke to turn the beautiful graphics back on. Okay. Now we will see the whole teller. And uh, in this case, instead of uh, waiting for a key, let's do a simple wait that kind of forces them to see the teller image for a second before the game starts. Uh, let's see. For i equals 1, 2, 10, uh, let's do uh, 30, 40. Next, I. Very short time. Let's do 400. Okay. So I think 1 to 1,000 is probably good. It's probably a little over a full second. <sighs> All right. We'll do a little more than that. So what we need after we show the teller, we're going to, oops, continue at 2,040, is that delay 
Oops. I. And then what happens after that? We do. Uh, let's clear the screen. Let's uh, poke four nine two three five zero to turn the lower four back on. Twenty fifty. Uh, and we'll just describe what the game allows us to do or what's the user to do. We'll switch it to 40 columns so we can kind of see. I've picked a number. One, and, oops, and 16. Can you guess what it is? All right. Let's see where we're at from 2000. All right, what did I do wrong? All right. And I basically I forgot to. Uh, I'll do it on this line. I meant to start that off with the go sub. So here we go. This sets the position. Between 1 and 16. Can you guess what it is? Okay. Let's try that again. Okay. So the next step is our random number generator because he obviously hasn't picked a, a, a number yet. So there's a rand function and the way it works is if you pass in a positive value, you should get back a random number between zero and 0 0.999. Um, sorry, <laughs> it doesn't make any sense to it. So in typical fashion, if you wanted a number uh, larger than one, you would multiply. So let's say a number between one and three. Well, that doesn't exactly look like a number between one and three because it's not, it's actually lower, but there we have a two. So the first thing we want to do here is uh, let's make this an integer instead of a floating point number that we get back. Ooh, I cannot type today. Okay, that's a zero. So let's go ahead and always add one, right? Okay, let's try this out. Uh, for i equals one to 100, print int rand one times three plus one. Okay, so that's how you get a number between one and three. So the first thing we need to do for our Apple Zini is have him pick a number. Okay. And we're gonna do that uh, with another go subroutine. Uh, we don't have to. We'll just do it at the start of our uh, at the start of our game. So at 2060, we'll put answer uh, our answer number. We'll call it an is equal to an integer value, which is a random number between one and sixteen. Okay, and the next thing we do before we start our game is set a number of tries. We'll give the player three try. Uh, we'll, yeah, we'll do tries and they'll count down. Uh, 
Okay, so here's the main game loop. We'll go up to 2100, and we say you have um, T tries left. Input give me a number between 1 and 16 and we'll get a okay we see our picture we hear the song picked a number between 1 and 16 can you guess what it is you have three tries left give me a number between 1 and 16 says extra ignored, don't worry about that. Okay. Now, the game loop is uh, tw 21, 20. If A equals A N, then 2400. Uh, we'll, we'll actually we'll do uh, 6502. If you get to 6502, you are so winning. Okay. 2130. If A equals, uh, or sorry, if A is greater than, let's let's word it differently. If A N is greater than what the answer they gave us, then print my number is higher. They should be mutually exclusive at this point. My number is lower. Okay, let's see how that's looking. My number's higher, my number's lower. Ooh. And I have a keyword issue. Let me change a real fast. So we'll say this is, uh, R is the reply. Just because it's uh, combining it into, the tokenizer is reading it as, uh, something different. So the R is your reply. Sorry, I, I'm really not good at basic and I'm not a big fan, but I want people to see, you know, this is totally me just doing this on the off the cuff on a on an afternoon uh, when I probably should be working. Uh, this is kind of a work, right? Okay. Now, 2150, they've given us a try. They didn't get to the winning number, so we want to take away one of their tries. 2160. Uh, let me list again. I'm using Control S here to stop. I need to read back a little bit. Yeah, we can go back to 1200, I think. One sixty. Yeah. Uh, if t is greater than zero, then let's just go back to uh, 2100. Otherwise, we have reached the end of the game, print. You lose. Actually, let's do this. Let's do um, sub 9000, print. You lose. Oh. You lose my number was do 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 uh, a n okay uh, it's all coming back now. 
2180, we say get a key. And then 2190, we just go to 1200. And 6502, print, uh, well, just to make it readable for now. You win. Drat. How perfect is that, huh? Okay. Uh, we don't really need all of it, just the game part. Pick a number between 1 and 16. I want to add a space there. Uh, we'll say 0. My number is higher. You have two tries left. So uh, we're not sanitizing input. Let's fix those two things. First, uh, give me a number between 1 and 16. We need a space at the end of that. Sneaky space. OK. And uh, then at the end, 2110. So 2110 is OK, really. But we need to sanitize the input. If R is less than zero or less than one, then twenty one ten. Twenty one sixteen. If R is greater than sixteen, then twenty one ten. Okay. And then uh Let's switch back to 40 column. Make sure this all works in 40 column. Ready to guess? Yeah, man, I'm ready. Number between 1 and 16. Let's try it. Give me a number between 1 and 16. No, you got to give me a number between 1 and 16. What about 2000? No, it's not a number between 1 and 16. My number is lower. Lower than 16? Is it higher than 1? Oh, it's higher. And then is it nine? Ah, oh, I was so close. So we press a key and it takes us right back to the beginning. We can say no and get out of here. Let's try once more. Um, we'll run it from the beginning. Doo -doo 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 -doo, the great apple zini. And let's go ahead and guess. Yeah, we're, we're gonna guess. Okay. Number between 1 and 16, let's do a binary search and we'll go with 8. Uh, the number is higher, so we'll do another uh, binary search between 8 and 16, which in my math is like 12, and my number is still higher. Oh gosh. Mm. It's 13, 14, or 15, or 16. Mm. We'll go with 14. Ah, I won. Okay. That's, that's pretty awesome. Okay. One last thing. Okay, so we got 6502, 6510. Let's just let everybody know. 64 sucks. Okay, uh, 6520. First thing we want to do is uh, print. Uh, let's print one more thing. Well, actually, no. Let's do this. Let's uh, bloat our song. called win and treasure is the picture okay treasure at uh, 2000 which is where the high res memory is and da, da, da. 6540 you have one this mighty treasure. 6550. Get K one more time. In this case, 
65.50. Let's go back to 1200. Yeah, that's fine. Let's do one other thing. I'm going to set the number of tries up uh, just so I can hopefully win here. So I got to test this kind of beginning to end. So let's try it. Uh, hang on. Set it back to four column. Sure. Let's take a guess. Seven tries left. A number between one and sixteen. We'll do binary search. It's lower, lower, four. It's higher, six. You win, drat. You have won this mighty treasure. Now this is. Okay. That is our game. Now we want to try it out on a real Apple, okay? Okay, so we've written our program. We want to try it out on the Apple II. I've made two small changes since you uh, saw it in the emulator uh, screen captures, which is I set the tries back to three tries for a game because that's the appropriate difficulty level if you use something like a binary search. Uh, if you go up to about five, I think it's almost uh, impossible to lose using an algorithm like that. Six, I'm sure it would be. Um, and the other change is, I never played my, my winning song when I uh, beat the game. I loaded it in the code and I just never called it when we show the treasure map or the treasure chest picture. So I fixed those. Uh, we can try it out right now. Okay, well there you go. We have a game. I did not say it was going to be a particularly good game or very fun, but I think it actually looks nice. And that was the point. I wanted to show how quickly we can get some content, get it into the Apple II, and then kind of wire it all together with a little simple AppleSoft Basic. Because a lot of people out there are super creative, way more creative than me, but they don't have the uh, the programming experience or just even the patience and time to build a complex image conversion pipeline or something like that. So um, hopefully this takes some of the fear out of that and gets other people's ideas going and of course if you want to eventually make a bigger game you can and start mixing in assembly or go all assembly. So I just want to thank you for hanging in there today and uh, I hope that some of you will at least be inspired to try and, and create something, even if it's just a little screen show or with your family photos that plays music every time it loops around. Um, that may drive you crazy after an hour or two, but you know it's still fun to do. Uh, we will make more videos, and by we, I mean I, uh, on the Apple II GS uh, programming stuff specifically the 65816. We'll get back into how that differs and how to program it specifically and then branching out into some of the Apple IIgs chipsets like the Insonic Dock and then of course the the firmware which contains the toolbox routines. So uh, I have started a Patreon for that for the video making. Don't worry if that's not your thing you don't, don't even worry about it. But the details are at the end of the video if you want to try and support that. That is separate from the actual software that I put out. The software that I write, these tools, will always be free and open source software. Um, I may eventually do one or two commercial uh, games, but those would probably still have free open source, but the physical copies you would pay for. So just to 
make sure I'm clear on that, that I'm going to continue to try and provide free software and free content for as long as I can. I really feel like the video stuff is important because when I was a kid, we didn't have the internet. Sorry, sorry, sound like an old man. But you went to the library, and if you didn't find a book on programming your Apple or any good programming books at all, you were kind of out of luck. And even just looking at assembly books, it was too obtuse. And all it took really was, you know, an hour or two with a friend who could program that came over to my house one day and, and uh, illuminated. Oh, okay, that's, that's how you start. And of course, I've spent the next 30 years trying to actually learn how to do it, but uh, assembly is a long process. You don't have to get there. You can do this stuff and still have a very satisfying time. So uh, that's it for today. I won't uh, keep this going on any longer than we need to. We'll be back soon. Uh, just remember to always give your friends and family a hug when you see them because they may have had a really rough day and need it. Take care. Bye-bye.